Hi, I'm Cap Sanchez, and welcome to New to Know. In this episode, we're going to cover mining. And at first, when I was planning this, I thought it was going to be a pretty short video. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized that there is a lot to say and know when it comes to mining in Nullset. Your overall goal is not to create a miner that can fight or necessarily run away, but to create a mining vessel that mines efficiently and is a very tough nut to crack in PvP. Survivability is the goal. I've broken this video down into sections. We're going to start with battle settings, then scanner settings, basic protocol for mining, skills you're going to need, gear you're going to need, and finally, we're going to talk about your corporation and alliance that you're in, in null set. All right, battle settings. Battle settings for a miner are different than pretty much any other type of ship. Um, to get to battle settings, you're going to want to click on your character, and then down in the lower right corner, there's a settings button. Click on that, select the battle settings tab, and then you're going to want to turn auto attack on. So that way, if you get attacked, you can auto attack with the drones right away. Um, and you want to turn auto orbit off. You do not want to be orbiting the ore sources or, you know, the asteroids. Uh, you want to be aligned, as you'll see in just a little bit, with your home base so that if you need to run, you can run quickly. Um, so auto-orbiting is just a bad idea in Nullsec. All right, so now let's talk about scanner settings for mining. So I already have some scanner settings uh, for mining set up, of course, because I do it all the time. But let's take a look and see how I set them up. So we'll take a look at mining. Ships, no ships show up at all. There's no need to look for ships when you're mining. Structure, well, I do like to see the station or the local citadel. I also have Stargate, but that's fairly optional. You usually don't need Stargate when you're mining, especially if you're mining in a fleet. So I'll actually turn that off, that's just noise. Celestial bodies, I like to see the asteroids. It shows me individual asteroids in the asteroid field and helps me target the ones that I'm looking for. Signal, you definitely want to see an asteroid belt. You do not want to see cosmic anomalies while you're mining. Others, I do like to see wrecks and cargo containers. Some people jettison um, things that they're not interested in. So there's uh, rare artifacts and things like that. You can just pick them up. Uh, and so wrecks and cargo, good to have on there. I don't want to see drones. I don't want to see pirates or police for a null set. And then standing, as always, neutral and hostile every single time. We'll hit save tag. And in case you don't remember how to create a mining tab, if you don't have one already done, you just scroll to the bottom, hit this plus sign, and it'll ask you to create a new one, enter a name for it. There you go. That's it. Now I'd like to cover basic mining protocol. One of the most important things you can do in Null is you mine in a fleet with other miners. You don't go mine solo. Um, this is sort of a school of fish thought. You're, there's safety in numbers, and there's a lot of safety in big numbers. So the bigger your fleets are, the better. And when I say fleet, I don't necessarily mean fleet in the traditional Eve Echoes way, where you can put up to you know 10 people into a fleet, or however many it is. I mean, you could be out there with multiple independent fleets. You might have 30, 40, 50 miners all mining at the same time, uh, and you're much better off with that approach. It's much, much safer. If you look around in this scene, I'm out with my, my fleet and my alliance, and there are lots of ships, which makes lots of targets. There are lots of drones. It's like a hornet's nest here. 
if you're some, uh, you know, stealth bomber coming in looking to pick off individual miners, you're really going to think twice about trying anything in this group here. Doesn't mean we're invulnerable, we do get attacked, but the little ones that want to pick you off just don't, uh, don't come around. When you land in the asteroid field, immediately you want to put your drones out. Uh, the drones are the deterrent to people that want to launch sneak attacks on you. So get the drones out right away. Um, now this may change sometimes when you're in a huge fleet, all the drones can create some lag and your overall uh, mining commander might say, hey, pull, pull the drones in for now. But you want to be ready to launch them if you need to. Next most important thing is you're going to need to align home. So you jump into a system, you release the drones, you really need to lock on to the asteroid of your choice or the asteroids of your choice, navigate to where you are within mining distance of them, and then immediately you want to align home. And you do that by selecting the local base and then selecting approach from the menu for that base. And that will turn your ship around. Once your ship is traveling in a straight line again, immediately shut the engines off so that you remain stationary there within distance to mine from your asteroids and yet pointed right back at your home base. This is why you turn auto orbit off. Because if you have auto orbit on in your battle settings, it's going to have you orbit that stupid asteroid and it's going to make you unaligned with your home base and it's going to cost you who knows, 5, 8, 10, 12 seconds to get aligned, and that could very well cost you your life. So you don't want to do that. So always align home. Next is watching local. Take a look at how many people are in local. So here we've got uh, close to 200. Uh, if suddenly it jumps to 220, then you might want to raise the alarm, or your fleet commander might raise the alarm, and everybody bugs out because a large Rome has just come in, and we get Romes a lot larger than 20. So watch that number closely. The other thing to do is if you're in there and you've got 200 people in local, scroll through those individuals, see who they are, how many are uh, you know, allies, and how many are reds or neutrals. If you only got a couple reds or neutrals, and you're in a big mining fleet, you're going to be fine. Uh, if you've got a ton of reds and neutrals, it might not be a good idea to go mining. And the last tip here under basic protocol has to do with bumping. So one of the tactics that is used against miners is if you're aligned towards your base, a stealth ship might come and ram you to knock you out of alignment so it takes you longer to be able to warp out. While you're aligning, they may bump you several times. Now, I had one guy who was supposedly an ally just the other day, and he thought it'd be funny to bump me. I immediately reported this cat as a potential spy, because bumping a miner in null isn't like bumping a miner in high set. You may do it in high set because you're goofing off, but you do it in null, you could be jeopardizing that particular miner. You certainly call him out as a target of focus for any potential enemy. So, no bumping. And that's it for basic protocol. Okay, now let's talk about gear for your ship. Obviously, for your high slots, you're going to want miners, and you're going to want the best miners that your technology level will grant you. Um, if you're in a retriever, obviously, one of you is a strip miner, it's not a Mark V miner. I don't know what a Mark 7 miner is for, because everyone I know that hits Mark 7 goes into a retriever and starts using strip miners. Um, now, you will hear stories about battle ventures where they have replaced the mining modules with weapons. Uh, and that's fine. They do exist, but they exist primarily as bait. Obviously, you're not mining if you have a regular, uh, you know, a non-mining harvester weapon installed there. So the battle ventures really have a very narrow purpose in life. For the most part, when you're mining in a fleet, equip the best miner you can, and off you go, and don't worry about 
sacrificing one of these for a weapon or any of that nonsense. Now, mid-slots. Mid-slots, you always want to have drones. That's your number one means of defense, are those drones. Other things that you might put in here, I don't really have them in now, uh, warp disruptors. Good for pre uh, preventing attackers from warping off, especially if you are bait in an ambush. It also provides some psychological effect. And, you know, people sometimes get freaked out when they have a warp scrambler on them um, or a warp disruptor. So uh, those are other options there. Entirely up to you. They are expensive, though, and if you lose that ship, that's just money wasted for the most part. Same thing for warp scramblers. Warp scramblers are just a stronger version of a warp disruptor. Uh, good choice for ambush settings, but otherwise really too expensive a piece of equipment that fit onto your boat. Stasis webifier. Again, these are good if you're baiting an ambush, but whatever is attacking you is very likely much faster than you are and won't stay in range for long, even when webbed. So I don't see a whole lot of purpose for stasis web fires. Now, sensor dampeners may be useful in ambush settings. Uh, other than that, your fat mining ship is too easy to scan for this to be really an effective add-on for you. And the other mid-slot modules, in my opinion, are really just a, a waste of time and money. So I'm not even going to burn capacitor on them. I just don't use them at all. Now in the low slots, since I am spec for shield, I, um, I equip for shield so that I can survive as long as possible. I'm going to be that tough nut to crack. So I've got shield extenders and, re uh, and reactive shield hardeners. Now I also have the basic damage control. I splurged on this. The nice thing about damage control is that it doesn't matter if you're shield spec or armor spec or even structure spec, it will help protect your ship from all types of damage through the shield and the armor and the structure. So this is really a, uh, a very good general purpose survivability module and they use a lot. Cloaking devices, earlier you may have noticed I had a cloaking device on my ship. Uh, that was from an earlier recording. Uh, really, I've thought about it doing this video, and having a cloaking device is just not practical on a mining ship. I've had a lot of the veterans out here tell me, oh no, they really are good to have, but uh, I haven't, I've yet to use them, so I <laughs> don't see a need to put it on there. It's just an extensive piece of equipment that's going to go trashed if my ship gets trashed. Now also down in low slots, you could put in drone damage amplifiers. Um, that's especially a good idea if you have high drone skills to start with. Part of being a tough nut to crack is fighting back. So if your drones can do serious damage, that might be a viable option. Um, same, similarly, drone navigation computers, they increase drone uh, flight speed they're not of much use, in my opinion. An omnidirectional tracking link increases a drone's range and tracking speed. I also think this is of little use for mining. Uh, there may be some edge conditions where it applies, but I wouldn't use them. Inertial stabilizers decrease the align time of your ship. This is useful if you're moving ships around, um, but I find when I'm doing fleet mining, which is what I'm always doing, uh, I don't really need an inertial stabilizer. I am already pre-aligned to the station. Uh, there's always a chance, of course, you're going to get jumped before you're pre-aligned, but I don't see the benefit of using up an entire slot for something that might happen as beneficial as using these shields and things like that for something that will happen. Uh, warp core stabilizers, they make it harder to warp scramble or warp disrupt. They can be very useful. If you get attacked uh, by solo ships when you're solo, but when you're fleet mining, the fleet drone should kill the attacker long before you need to warm out, uh, warp out. So your survivability is what's key down here in the low slot area, not your ability to wriggle out like a greased pig. Other item types you can put down here uh, really are not intended for mining purposes. 
So let's take a look at some rigs. Rigs come in a number of different types. I'm only going to cover the ones that I really think matter uh, for mining. Uh, there are drone rigs. So once again, if you really want to focus on drone power, you've got drone firepower augmenter, which increases drone damage. Uh, you've got a drone speed augmenter, which increases a drone's rate of fire. So those both translate into uh, greater damage per second. Uh, drone control range augmenter allows the drone to attack further out. Uh, maybe okay if you're getting hit by snipers, but even then, snipers probably be able to hit you where your drones can't hit back. So uh, I, I wouldn't use those as much. Basically, the drone firepower augmenter and the drone speed augmenter would be my choices. Now here, I've gone a little differently. I've gone for shield rigs. Um, this is a core defense field extender. I just got the level ones. I'm not going to spend a fortune on this thing. It's only a venture three. Uh, but it, that alone gives me a shield bonus of 20%, which definitely makes me tougher nut to crack. And the next one over here is a core defense field extender, which also adds to a shield bonus of 20%. So these two things working together make it pretty tough. On the industrial rig side, we got minor efficiency upgrades, uh, increases the mining amount by 20%, which is a big factor. Uh, you could go to a lot more expensive, which I might do on a retriever, but on this boat, I'm happy with this. And the other one is a minor circulation accelerator, which uh, decreases the amount of time it takes for you to have a mining cycle. So it mines faster. And that also increases basically the rate at which you can mine, and you get more ore for the, the minute. So good thing to have there. Now, you could also use navigation rigs here instead. You might want to use polycarbon engine housing to decrease your inertia modifier, but I think your industrial ship command skill probably will do more to help with your inertia modifier than using up a valuable slot for polycarbon engine housing. You can also use a warp core optimizer to resist warp disruptors. Once again, then you're trying to be a slippery pig, and I think in fleet mining, that's not as valuable as being tough. The other navigation rigs are generally not useful. All right, the last thing I want to touch on are corporations and alliance. You may not think about this, but you're not going to null solo. You need an excellent corporation and an excellent alliance, and you need them for a number of reasons. One is, if you're going to be doing fleet mining, you need a fleet. There have to be a large number of other people out there mining, uh, and uh, that really requires a good corporation and a good alliance. Uh, I'm in a very large alliance, and in a very excellent corporation. I'm in Pandemic, uh, and when we go out, as you've seen earlier in this video, uh, not just Pandemic, but the entire alliance, there's a lot of boats out there flying. One of the key reasons uh, that you also want a good corporation alliance is you do not want to fly your mining ships from high sec into null sec. So you likely already have a venture, venture two, venture three in high sec. When you get a move out to null sec, don't bring that ship with you. Seriously, you're going to be tempted to, you're going to think it's okay, but it's not. You're just going to lose that ship and get potted back to high sec. What you really want to do in, when you're a part of a good corporation and alliance, maybe sell those ships if you are strapped for money, sell them in high sec, get a cheap little frigate, boogie on out to null sec, and rebuy the ships out there. If you're in a good corporation or a good alliance, they're going to have ships available for you to buy. You might have to wait a day because you might have to order the ship and have them build it for you, but that's okay. That's a much safer way to go. And remember, that's just a day that your character is skilling up anyway. So not a waste at all. Another good reason that you want to belong to a good organization, corporation, or alliance is corporations specifically will very often have an ore buyback program. So Pandemic has an ore buyback program. I can go out, mine to my heart's content, come back in, 
drop it off in uh, one of the corporate hangars, fill out a form online using the, uh, the pandemic app that uh, accounts for the amount of ore that I dropped into the hangar, and they'll pay me for it. Much simpler. I don't have to put it on the market. I don't have to undercut other people. Uh, what they pay me for it, I haven't really looked into it. May not be G to prices. I wouldn't be surprised. But I view that as a tax, but, uh, but a tax I'm happy to pay because I'm in a large organization. When I need a ship, I can just buy one. Even if they don't have one in stock, someone will make it for me within 24 hours. So it's pretty awesome. And how do they make those ships? With the ore you supply in the ore buyback program. So if you have an organization that has an ore buyback program, you're in uh, uh, good stead. If you're being romanced and asked to come out to Null by a corporation that is not part of a large alliance, does not have the infrastructure uh, to help protect you, then you might want to reconsider that. There's a reason why the top corporations and top alliances are who they are. It's a matter of management of those organizations, and it's a, mad, uh, and it's a matter of membership. They need a large number of members to pull that off. Okay, that's it for mining in NullSec. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this and, and got some, you know, some benefit from it. Uh, please like and subscribe if you did find benefit to this video. And uh, I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.